Let's look at the step-by-step -step installation of Informatica on Linux. The Windows installation is pretty straightforward. It's almost on the similar lines of what we are going to see on Linux. The only difference is whatever you give in the command line here with yes, no, there you do it using mouse clicks on the GUI. What are the prerequisites of installing Informatica Power Center or data quality? Informatica software with version 10.2 is now coming up with something called as enterprise software, which means they give you multiple products combined into a single executable. You choose whatever product you need to install on your server. And obviously, even if you choose to install additional things and if your license do not cover it, it doesn't matter. You'll just end up using space for installation of the additional products, for example, EDC, Enterprise Data Catalog. If you don't have your license, you can still install it, but it doesn't work. So you have to only choose the products which you need to install. And it's a known fact, not only for Informatica product, but with any technology nowadays, as the number of users grow over a period of time, all we need to do is to make sure that you have enough hardware infrastructure, which will help to scale up. Of course, that totally depends on the policies and procedures of how the infrastructure would be set up on your project and your organization. But it's pretty straightforward with Informatica platform. It doesn't need a complex whole lot of things to be done before you need to upgrade or increase its core or RAM or whatever is needed. If you're looking at these steps for the first time, it might seem a little complex, but if you have already enrolled to Informatica Power Center training from me, and if you look at the Windows installation steps, it's exactly the same step screen by screen. In Windows, you do it using a mouse click and you can see the window. In Linux, you see it on a black screen and you give the commands using the keyboard. That's the only difference. And a quick note of caution, just like any other software or any other data integration specific software, it is always recommended that the Informatica is installed and configured in a specific dedicated server which means you do not share this server or infrastructure with other installations like Oracle, SQL Server, or data stage and other things. And with something called as application account, in some projects, it's also called a service account. In some projects, it's called technology account, different naming conventions, but the concept is the same. The service account or the application account is just another operating system user with no login privileges. So individual accounts are usually bound to certain policies, meaning if I'm an Informatica Power Center developer, I have certain rights, like I can do a select, I can do an update, but I cannot delete. Just a random example, right? So it, that totally depends on how the groups are created, what policies your enterprise wants you to adhere to. So using an individual account for hosting an application like this is not a best practice because let's say there is a developer X who's using his account to do all this. And after six months has left the company. Obviously he doesn't share any of his credentials. You don't know how to manage your system. So usually any of the installations are done using something called as application account, like I said, service account or technical account. And those are managed by the infrastructure team or the Linux team or the owners of that application. So it is not dependent on a person, it is the group. And not only that, not only the ease of access, ease of usage, but also from security point of view, you'd make sure that none of the individual accounts will have delete options and only application accounts will have it. And if there is any audit in the future on what kind of production accesses do you have, you can clearly say that none of the users have production access. It's only the system account or the application account and it has the required privileges for it to be working. And usually the naming conventions of the accounts are totally dependent on different organizations. I've seen different formats in different organizations. There is no hard and fast rule that you should only have a naming format like this. Of course, there are some prefixes and suffixes to identify. For example, service account will have either SA or SV as a prefix before the username. But other than that, it's pretty straightforward. So that's what we just spoke about, application account or service account. That's the naming convention. That's an example. It says SV underscore infa underscore version 
10.2 or SA underscore info underscore version 10.2. That's just an example. You might have different naming conventions which you have to follow in your project. You just have to follow that. Let's talk about the next prerequisite, which is the disk space. By rule of thumb, whenever you are setting up your environment, dev, QA, UAT, and prod, or just dev, QA, and prod, start with whatever Informatica suggests. All you have to do is identify the PAM, which is nothing but product availability matrix. That's the hardware requirements, which Informatica suggests everybody to follow. How do you get the product availability matrix? Let's go to Google here. I just kept the search PAM for Info 10.2, or you can just type in the whole stuff, product availability matrix. Let's go to the first link here. Go to resources, select product availability matrix, or just go to PAM community here. Obviously it'll ask you for your login. And if you have already purchased the license, they would have given you one. If not, register with your personal email ID and log into that. It is nothing but an Excel sheet. If you notice here, product availability matrix for Informatica 10.2. Click on that. Let me see if I can log in here with my ID. I've logged into the system, logged into Informatica portal, and this is the product availability matrix. So. If you look at, um, let's say you're going with Red Hat Enterprise Linux, which version of Red Hat 7 and 6.5 chipset, 64-bit. And if you're going with Oracle, S means you'll have it somewhere here, supported. NS is not supported, NA is not applicable. So Oracle 12C R1, 12C 11G R2 are supported. These are the different ODBC drives which are supported. So if you go with the web services, that's the requirement. That's the data quality for Siebel. That's the data quality and power center. That's the data quality and power center intercompatibility. And these are the list of libraries which are part of it. Again, if you're going for any specific aspects like healthcare, then what are the libraries? These are the different accelerators and what kind of authentication is supported? LDAPs like Tivoli, Sun, SAML. So it literally gives you all the default information which you should know for the installation. So I would just download this, look for whatever I am planning to install, let's say version 10.2. And parallelly, I would also look for the installation document, which is nothing but a PDF available for free when you search in Google with Informatica version 10 installation and configuration. Download that, look at the infrastructure requirements and start with that. In disk space, of course, we can take some examples around how much is required. Just for the installation till version 10, 4 GB was enough. Now they might have increased it. I have to check the documentation but the installation file within itself is a 25 GB worth of size file. So you also have to go to the level of understanding what are the disk space requirements for your repositories like Power Center or Model Repository Service, which is nothing but IDQ. What kind of logging requirements are there? What kind of backups? If you have to do any upgrades and patches, and if you have to store any data files, cache files, all of these have to be considered. Like I said, whatever are the default, those are covering all of these aspects. But like I said, I mean, if you're going with dev, QA, and prod, start with dev. And if you're doing it for the first time, which is very unlikely because Informatica is there for quite some time now, which means you would have already had the environments, you can go ahead with the same thing. But if you're doing it for the first time, start with dev, do your analysis. And then, like I said in the previous point, as infrastructure setup is pretty straightforward, it should not be a challenge other than you raising requests across uh, infrastructure team to get the additional hard disk space or additional RAM or additional cores to be added. Database requirements specific to Informatica data quality. There are at least four to five different databases which are required. One for the domain, one for the model repository service or MRS, one for monitor, one for workflow, one for profiling, one for staging. All these are discussed and created using the steps as we go ahead and you can see them 
I've also shown you what are the steps to create them at a central place and how do you repurpose them. Last but not the least, the licenses. Obviously, you should have the licenses to be configured. The power center and data quality is usually an integrated license. If you already have power center and if you're purchasing data quality, they'll give you an add-on license. All you need to do is add the license. Steps of adding the license are already discussed in Informatica admin and power center courses. All the features are driven based on the license keys. Of course, you'll get different license keys, one for production and for non-production environments. Usually the non-production ones are used for dev and QA and the production one is used for production. And this is one of the mandatory things during the installation and configuration. So those are the prerequisites of what you need before you start with the installation. Now let's go ahead with the installation itself.